why do you need to look at uh, cypher cloud as a spm first and foremost uh, it's a single pane of glass as uh, the enterprises are working on multiple you know, saas applications all at once and then um, the lack of resources right um, if you were to uh, take up the spm uh, component you can actually say that well i just want to comply with the standards and uh, the product will simply take care of right the um, the continuous compliance aspect of uh, configurations uh, you don't have to worry about uh, manually checking the uh, multi factor authentication settings or uh, the password security and what not outsource all of that to the sspm cypher cloud sspm component uh, wherein the um, uh, the configuration checks are run periodically and any um, misconfigurations are remediated right automatically and then um applying the industry's best practices this is very important because when it comes to the cloud security posture management you definitely have to understand the, the two sides of the story one is what is applicable to a cloud what is available in the cloud and then what is the best thing to uh, to be applied uh, to the cloud uh, and what is acceptable right from the regulatory standpoint so having the templates and rule sets to make sure that these configurations are monitored and then um having the assurance to the auditors that well we have continuous compliance achieved by uh verifying the configurations every day right uh, that's the type of uh, you know scheduling uh, facility that you get with uh, cypher cloud sspm so uh, i have here a demonstration uh, to illustrate few use cases the first one is to assess the security posture right have the assessment uh, run against a salesforce or an office 365 instance that you're subscribing to and uh, then remediate these configurations right uh, the assessment is going to uh, understand if there are any misconfigurations and then be able to correct those and then uh also monitor the user activity right how you can actually paint that single pane of glass with uh, you know privileged user activity as well here i am logged into salesforce and uh, uh what we are going to do is to you know tweak some settings right we are basically going to go to the password policies and we are going to be the bad boy the bad admin who has changed that uh, setting that well passwords never expire right um so that's uh, one thing we are going to tweak right just just so you know how the product can actually go into the saas application understand the misconfigurations this is a misconfiguration clearly right um and also the invalid login attempts right if the user tries um you know here right now the setting is 3 but we're going to say no limit user can try as many times uh, as he or she wants so uh, these are clearly two misconfigurations in the salesforce cloud that uh, we have actually enabled right and uh, we are saving that information um so these misconfigurations have gone into salesforce and we are just going to make sure that the uh, you know settings are actually applied now you can see that uh, the password the policies and uh, the invalid login attempts both are um, applied right now let's come back to uh, cypher cloud product right um in the management console uh, we're simply going to run an existing assessment uh, you know see the user experience and then we'll come back and see what the um assessment actually has in it how do you schedule assessment so here we are pushing the button running the assessment right and the assessment is running which uh, takes uh, in a few seconds actually to complete salesforce is a joy to work with apis are extremely fast so if i come back and the refresh right the screen on salesforce now you're going to see that the uh, password expression uh, policy is uh, restored to 30 days and then the invalid login attempts is actually restored to 3 uh, right that's how uh, it should be uh, for security uh, we have actually at the beginning of the demo we have uh, injected bad configurations misconfigurations now uh, cypher cloud sspm component is able to go into uh, salesforce and remediate those misconfigurations automatically right 
So this is this is how uh, the product actually works. Very simple. Um, now let me step back and uh, show you how exactly uh, the product uh, uh, can be configured to take care of what you just saw. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we provide a very simple option to um, enable the cloud security posture, right? Um, so simple uh, enablement as part of cloud onboarding process, and. Um, then uh, within the uh, cloud security posture management feature, we offer both uh, infrastructure and uh, SaaS. So we're going to look at SaaS specifically today. You can schedule a, a, a audit, right? For example, quarterly PC audit here, right? Choose an assessment template, which is the uh, best practices. And then there's a scheduling option. Uh, you can actually schedule it one time uh, for the assessment to be run or it can be scheduled um, on a periodic, periodic basis, right? Daily, weekly, uh, quarterly, or whatnot. And then once the uh, scheduling options are chosen, right, uh, you know, figure out when you want to start the scan, you know, uh, if this is being run in the production, you might want to do it on a Saturday, it's up to you. Right, and then once the scan is done, how do you want to be notified, right? You pick a template, and uh, this is fully customizable template as well. So, you know, as you can see, it's very simple to actually schedule an assessment. And then uh, within the assessment, you have uh, the option to enable a number of policies that we provide out of the box. Um, for Salesforce, uh, we are showing how the assessment uh, rules are broken down, right? Network access, password policies, session settings, certificate details, right? And the data upload and uh, download activities, right? Um, uh, you know, obviously, the list of, uh, you know, rules uh, changes by the cloud for Office 365 is different. Um, but uh, the focus is certainly on the best practices and the uh, complaints, right? You have the ability to disable certain rules um, if password is not applicable to you because you're using SSO, for example, right? Uh, you can disable it and uh, put in, uh, you know, uh, the comment there. And then um, as part of the assessment, you have the ability to assign a weight to a particular rule. Some are more important to you and the others are uh, less. So we give you that flexibility. And then um, once the scan is done, if um, misconfiguration is detected, what do you do, right? Do you uh, simply, you know, log for audit and uh, alert on, or do you remediate automatically, right? That option is available as well. So uh, in the demo that you just saw, we have enabled uh, you know, remediate option, right? That That's how the password policies were actually corrected automatically once we ran the assessment. So let's take a look at uh, how the compliance rule looks like, right? We not only say that uh, the rule name is activating IP range restrictions, but we also provide detail on what exactly it entails. So we can actually go through the uh, compliance rule detail and understand what it does, right? Now, um, once the assessment is run, uh, you have an inventory of uh, the assessments, right? So uh, the assessment uh, you know, inventory uh, comes with a report uh, with a nice executive summary followed by all the details. So here you're seeing what the executor wants to know, right? How many uh, compliance rules were applied and how many passed and how many failed? And what is the scope? And then uh, we're gonna follow that up with details on what exactly failed, right? And what the remediation you know, path looks like. And we also include what has passed. So it's a nice looking report that has um, enough detail for you to um, uh, be happy with uh, the audit process. And finally, uh, let's take a look at the monitoring aspects, right? We talked about privileged user activity, uh, how to really um, understand uh, what the admin has been doing. Uh, here in the Salesforce uh, situation, Right, uh, as you can see, there are a number of activities that uh, the admin has performed, uh, certificate and key management updates, uh, you know, connecting applications, because those, those are third-party applications basically pulling data from the Salesforce instance, right? 
and then customizing the accounts, uh, managing the users, uh, updating the password policies, updating the session settings, right? Uh, as you can see, there are a whole bunch of activities the admin is performing within Salesforce instance, and those are well captured. Uh, again, all of these are interactive reports. Uh, you can drill down into fine details, right? You start with these pretty looking charts, and you can get to the you know user of John, uh, though, uh, you know, updating a user account um, on January 7th of uh, 2019. You can get down to that detail. The privileged user activity um, is useful uh, for multiple clouds. For Office 365, uh, you know, we have created dedicated dashboards uh, to make sure that uh, there is focus. We are seeing that as a major cloud uh, in the install base. So uh, similarly, admin activities are captured and uh, uh, provided for analysis. And if there are alerts required on these activities to find those needles and hashtags, we you know, provide those as well. Uh, 